Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode, my entitled parents kidnapped me and held me hostage at their home after a major car accident. Update, my entitled parents kidnapped me and held me hostage at their home after a major car accident. Apparently, I made my mum cry every Mother's Day throughout my childhood. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. My entitled parents kidnapped me and held me hostage at their home after a major car accident. I, 32F, was in a major car accident in January of 2021. Ironically, I had been taking my boyfriend, 36M, to the ER because he had bleeding ulcers and ended up getting admitted to the hospital that night. This was still when they were enforcing COVID rules so I was booted out of the hospital at about 0300 in the morning. When I left it was snowing, and not thinking hopped on the freeway which wasn't a good idea. I had been driving a lifted Jeep Cherokee with mud terrain tires, not the best ever for snowstorm driving. Getting off the freeway, to go home my brakes locked up and I went into a light pole headfirst at about 60 miles per hour. My Jeep did not have airbags, that was dumb. Needless to say, my car was totaled and I had to be extracted from the car by the fire department. This whole time I had been blacking out and losing consciousness, and I still get random flashes of I don't have all my memories from that night or several months after the accident. I got sent to the nearest trauma center which was the same hospital I had just left. The nurses felt pretty bad about kicking me out. I ended up with a moderate to severe TBI, broken under my left eye, hairline fractures on my skull on the left side, bruising behind my ears, and black eyes. I had also cut open the inside of my mouth, had multiple lacerations all over my face, I broke my driver's side window with my face, broke and bruised some ribs, had hairline fractures in my spine, broke my right wrist, my right knee and my left foot which required two surgeries and I still need approximately three more. Needless to say, I was not doing great. I had recently gotten divorced the previous year and think that my entitled parents decided that my accident was my boyfriend's fault. I had to stay in the hospital for a total of 12 days in which case the mild family drama exploded into a severe family inferno. As I got closer to being released all I had wanted to do was go home to my boyfriend and our kids. He had two previously and I had one. My entitled mother decided that wasn't what she wanted. On the phone we sound almost identical, the whole time that I was in the hospital she had been getting on the phone and impersonating me to my apartment complex management, even going as far as calling the cops to get my boyfriend and his two kids removed from my apartment. They were not on my lease yet. My EM also forged my signature on hospital paperwork and made up a story about how my boyfriend was abusive to me and got him banned from seeing me at the hospital. Again forging my signature and writing a letter stating I didn't want to see him. This whole time I was still suffering from the effects of my TBI and was delirious from the combination of pain medications and brain fog from my head injury. EM even had the locks changed on my apartment without my consent. When I finally was released from the hospital I was in a wheelchair because of my broken foot that had just had two plates and ten screws surgically put in to hold it together and an ankle to hip brace on my other leg from my knee being broken. I requested to go home to my apartment but again EM played it that I couldn't go home because I had a second story apartment and couldn't take care of myself. So I got sent to stay at my parents house, against my will, an hour away from home because EM wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to let my boyfriend come back to my apartment. I spent almost a whole miserable month there, EM refused to take me home even after I got crutches and was able to bear some weight. Initially, they refused to even go get my crutches from town because they didn't want me to have more mobility. Eventually, it got to the point where I had a friend come and pick me up from EM's house so I could go home because they kept refusing to let me go. As I gained clarity in my mind and was taken off the intense pain medication I was able to start rectifying the situations that EM made a huge mess of in my life but I'm still trying to recover in some areas. I didn't find out until much later when medical bills started coming in that EM had called my boyfriend's health insurance company, impersonating me, and had me removed from his insurance. It took months of calling and badgering and footwork on my part to get the situation figured out and have the insurance pay for what they were supposed to pay for. 
it almost caused me to go bankrupt. At the same time, EM signed me up for minimal health insurance coverage through the state that I had no idea I was enrolled in until I got a bill later stating that I back out fees. Needless to say I eventually completely cut both EM and my father out of life after finding out how much they tried to control and how much they messed my life up. I ended up getting protection orders after they tried to break into my house, stalked me, and sent family and friends over to harass me. This whole incident was the straw that broke the camel's back. There was quite a bit of retaliation on their side that threw my life into a total tailspin ever since but I'm sticking to my guns and not backing down. Update Wow! I'm a little overwhelmed with how fast this post exploded yesterday, I was definitely not expecting that. I tried to keep up with as many comments and replies as possible, but I figured this might be an easier way to answer the questions that have been thrown at me. But first off, I definitely understand those who are skeptical about my post, it's more than a little bizarre and I'm probably not the best at describing some of the situations. But I seriously appreciate all the great advice that has been given and I'm looking at some of the other options listed in the comments as well as what I am already doing. I think the easiest part for me to clear up is the questions about the insurance and my EM getting me off of the insurance I had with my boyfriend and putting me on the state insurance without my or my boyfriend's consent. As an adult, I can call in and cancel my coverage at any time, with or without the policyholder's knowledge. There doesn't need to be a major life change in order to be taken off of a policy, usually just to get new insurance coverage or add someone to insurance. All my EM needed was the insurance information and access to my information as well as his, which she did. She already had all of my personal information including my SS number and my insurance information. This is how she signed me up for insurance coverage through the state as well. As some of you speculated I'm sure it had something to do with the financial control she could exert over me as well as trying to totally get my boyfriend out of my life. But honestly, I will probably never get the real answers to that. The reason why I didn't get the hospital bills immediately is a pretty easy explanation. First off, my car insurance coverage included medical bill payments as well up to a certain amount of money. At first, Going through the billing process the hospital, orthopedics, anesthesiologist CCT had to send their bills through my car insurance first and then through my health insurance. I'm not 100% sure how that all works exactly but I do know it was a mess and it took multiple tries to explain to all the doctors what was already paid out, who got what money, and the next insurance to the bill. As well as it took weeks for them and myself to realize that while I was in the hospital the insurance I went in with got cancelled mid-hospital stay. So bills got sent out to the insurance I had to my boyfriend which was followed by confusion from the hospital, insurance companies, and myself trying to figure out when it got cut off, what was covered and what exactly happened. This takes time, it doesn't happen overnight. My EM did tell me eventually what she had done with my insurance and how she changed it but by that point, it was too late and I was scrambling to try and rectify the situation and get as much covered from my hospital stay as possible. Even doing that I still owe nearly 50k in medical bills. For those who had questions about how I had gotten on his insurance in the first place when he started the job, he had the insurance from which we had qualified as domestic partners because of how long we had been living together and how long the relationship had lasted. For everyone wondering if we went to the cops or are filing charges or anything along those lines it's a very long story but yes we are. I have a very good lawyer who actually represents myself and my boyfriend. It took me a while after I got home to my apartment to get to the point where I cut contact with EM. When I finally got home I tried to start seeing my boyfriend again and we started the long process of trying to heal from what happened since EM had essentially kicked him and his two kids out of my apartment in the middle of winter they really had nowhere else to go. The kids ended up staying with friends for a while and he stayed in his car and rented a hotel room when possible. I wasn't fully aware of what exactly was going on at the time as EM had my cell phone and access to my phone and while I was at her home she watched like a hawk to make sure that I wasn't contacting him. If I did I got berated, screamed at, and at one point did not have access to my phone which was all very confusing because I was on very heavy duty pain medication, as well as having the confusion from the TBI. After I had made it back to my apartment and started to have more contact with my boyfriend my EM escalated. 
staying at my apartment even though I told her I was fine, showing up randomly, and eventually getting so angry that I refused to cut contact with my boyfriend that she threatened to kill him. That was when I grew a slight backbone and decided that it just wasn't going to get better. At that point, I filed for a protection as well as my boyfriend who copied my paperwork. When the first protection orders got dropped because we didn't have enough evidence, she had gotten a lawyer at this point but we did not because we couldn't pay for a retainer, and this was before I had gotten smart enough to install cameras and a call recorder on my phone. My EM went to the city's prosecutor's office and told them that she wanted to press charges of perjury against my boyfriend. This is where the friendship with the prosecutor started and it was very hard for us to get anything to stick because EM was getting in with our local PD and the prosecutor. Yes, they ended up going after my boyfriend and not me. Yes, that is selective prosecution. Yes, it is very illegal. At this same time, my mother and father are retired and apparently have nothing better to do with themselves, they had been in contact with my boyfriend's ex-wife and at the same time we were getting beaten down with the perjury case, they also helped my boyfriend's ex-wife start a custody battle for his children. They had been separated for some time but the divorce had been stalled in court for several years at this point. They also filed in small claims court for lawyer and court fees after our first protection order was removed. My ex-husband had been allowing my daughter to see both of my parents still, which I did fight and which has probably spurred the grandparents' rights slash visitation case that they filed during this same time. So we have been fighting one thing at a time and collecting all of the evidence that we can. All of the hospital paperwork, especially those that were forged had to be requested from the hospital. The phone calls to the insurance company needed to be requested and we needed our lawyer to get those, it wasn't something they were just going to give us, unfortunately. At this point, we have waited though almost all of the court filings my EM had thrown at us and we are finishing gathering out evidence so we can counterattack at this point. At the time our lawyer was telling us to be patient and gather as much as we could as when we get through the thick of it we can throw what we have into the system but we need it and want it slash want to have enough to nail them to the wall. From here, there will be counter lawsuits both jointly between myself and my boyfriend and separate lawsuits. As well as submitting what we have for the identity theft. It's a very long process and it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get things moving. For those of you wondering if me and my boyfriend got back to together and how that is going yes we did get back together. It didn't take long for me to start realizing what was happening when I wasn't being given the heavy narcotics and my brain started the healing process from the TBI. It did take time for me to wade through everything that happened and try and recall memories. We did get back together found a new place and moved back in together with his two kids and my daughter. We have had some hard times and of course, we are both a little damaged from the whole process but we both have counseling are doing well. I hope this helps explain and expand on the questions everyone has been asking in the comments. If you haven't already, file criminal charges against your parents. At least for the identify theft etc. We've been in and out of court for almost the past year. There's been a pretty big power struggle where they tried to file perjury against me for filing for protection orders to them filing for grandparents' custody and visitation of my daughter. Since they are friends with the prosecutor and my EM is amazing at playing victim and manipulation it's been a big uphill battle. But we're finally getting somewhere. And don't forget all the fraud and lies that was committed. I hope that there is an ongoing investigation into your parents for identity theft, fraud and kidnapping. Cutting them off doesn't even come near to cutting it. Update, my entitled parents kidnapped me and held me hostage at their home after a major car accident. It's been about six months since I posted the original here and posted a clarifying update after getting slammed with a ton of comments from everyone. It's still getting new comments every day which just blows my mind. I kind of laughed at a lot of the comments that were doubting that it was a true story, because honestly I wish it had been. I really appreciate the supportive comments from everyone who sent them too, it helped me feel a lot more validated in making sure that I stayed far far away from my parents and smashed down those feelings of regrets and guilt. Not much headway has happened in the legal department. It has been taking much longer than we had hoped. A lot of our lawsuits are dependent on when my boyfriend's probation ends. 
Just to remind whoever reads this, he was arrested for perjury on a protection order that we both filed against my parents because we messed up on a date. Even though our paperwork was exactly the same he was arrested for perjury and I wasn't because my mother is friends with some of the people in the prosecutor's office. He ended up taking a plea deal and had to do some community service and we're waiting for his probation time to end so we can launch our countersuits. His divorce was finalized in March, which was a total circus. My mother left his ex-wife to sink or swim and even refused to show up for her to be a witness during their divorce trial. We got full custody of his children, and we have been focusing on healing our family. We had our baby in February a week earlier than planned with an emergency C-section due to a partial placental abruption. We've been very busy focusing on our kids and learning how to take steps to heal ourselves and help our kids heal from everything they have gone through. We've been getting our finances in order and are looking at buying a home with room enough for all of us. And looking at both of us finishing school, which is easier said than done. I have to come up with 10k to go back and finish. The medical debt has been slowly getting removed from my credit as I've been disputing it and we are finally stabilizing. We also finally got married which is helping the kids feel more stable. Everything has been going really well, thanks for all the well wishes. Sorry the update isn't as excited as I wish it would have been, it would have been really satisfying to completely bury my parents in litigation and such and we are planning to do some damage once his probation is done but we're learning that some of the healing process is moving on and succeeding. Thanks for the update. Don't give up you can do it. Thank you. It's a huge relief to have a light at the end of the tunnel. I am happy things are looking up and really hope you get the lawsuits goings. Thank you. We keep going back and forth, we still have time to decide how to proceed legally but there's a part of us that just wants to move on past the nightmare and a part that wants to set their entire world on fire. So glad to hear to hear the update. As soon as read the title I remember reading about your crazy parents six months ago. At least you guys are making good progress. Hope it all ends well. You said you wished your post could be more exciting, you got married, had a healthy baby, got custody of his kiddos, and everyone seems to be healing moving forward. I think that's all pretty exciting after everything you've been through. Though I would be lying if I said I wasn't hoping for some legal whammy on your sperm donor and incubator considering everything they did to you. Absolute insanity. I wish you all the best in the future, may it be a lot more peaceful and healthy. Apparently, I made my mum cry every Mother's Day throughout my childhood. Throughout my childhood from when I started school to about age 18 I would ask my mum what she wanted for Mother's Day, and every year she would say very clearly nothing. You don't need to get me anything at all. And so I didn't, because I was a child and she was my mum and I believed what she said. In my teens I just assumed it wasn't something she felt was important. I'm an only child, and my lovely dad who lived with us wasn't one for social conventions and didn't intervene. I'm not sure why, but aged 18 I started buying her a Mother's Day card and present which always went down well with her. After I had my own son, my mom decided to tell me that every Mother's Day that she didn't receive a present she would hide away and cry because I hadn't bought her anything, and that everyone else had a lovely present and card except her. What's going on here? I'm 48 now and still feel weird about both her not telling child aged me that she'd like some flowers or whatever, and also that she told adult aged me about how I'd made her cry each year. If she brings it up again tell her you are so glad that she is learning to communicate her wants and needs better. Yes. Subtly acknowledge and encourage the healthy behavior. Sounds like your mother is a bit on the passive-aggressive side. Seriously, what adult holds a kid responsible for taking them seriously? You asked, your mother said nothing, and you're a kid, you took her literally. If she ever brings it up again, gently shut her down. Because you were a kid. Your mother should have gently pointed you towards something a card would be nice. I'm guessing that she helped you pick out a gift for Father's Day? Thank you. Yes, she helped picked out a card and present for my dad. Woman face palming. You were a child don't blame yourself. You clearly couldn't drive to get it it should have been your dad's job. 
Also your mom should have communicated to you that she would like a card how is a child supposed to read minds? Mom should have been upset with dad here. He would be the one to actually facilitate the gift getting. I can't stand parents who put any sort of blame on actual children. Ah boy, sad face, my nan is a worse version of this. E.g., she'd babysit my cousin. If my aunt bought her flowers as a thanks, she'd be told that she didn't have to do that, she wasn't expecting anything. So one time, my aunt didn't buy flowers. Cue the tears about being unappreciated, taken for granted etc. I bet your mother wanted you to do a little something for her, kind of like you wanting to show love despite her insistence of wanting nothing. She failed to factor in how literal kids can be. And I bet she would have said oh, you shouldn't have, if you had actually done something. I think this is more on your dad. He is supposed to take you shopping and make sure kid you knows the social convention. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.